Hey guys, I'm back with another custom kernel review for the Nexus 4 and this one's going to be Bricked Kernel. As always, all the links are in the description. You can see here it is working on Android 4.3, but it does only work for the JSS build. So make sure you're running a custom ROM with the JSS build. If you're on the factory image, you will be running the JW build. This kernel will not work for that build, so yeah. So when you go ahead and install this kernel, you're going to be greeted by something slightly different. You can see right here I'm booted into TWRP. You click it like normal and then you just go ahead and confirm to flash. It's something called an aroma installer and it just gives you a few options. You can see right here it's different already. We can see the bricked. It gives you a warning with dragons ahead symbol. Press next. It tells you exactly what you're installing, which version in the home page of the kernel itself. Also gives you a disclaimer here which you have to tick. It allows you to pre-install Sweep to Wake, which I'm going to do because it's a pretty awesome feature. I'll describe what that is a little bit later. Keep pressing next until you get to the end. It gives you a little log of exactly what it's doing right in front of you so you can read it if you're interested. And then it will eventually reboot and you should be good to go into your custom kernel. So here you go, reboot system and you're good to go. So now that you've got everything installed correctly, we can go ahead and check out this sweep to wake feature. This allows you to wake up your device by sweeping from the left to the right hand side of the screen. And it actually allows you to turn off your display by sweeping from the right to the left on the bottom portion of your display. It's a pretty awesome feature. It's going to save your button from physical wear. You don't have to keep trying to hit the button. And it's just a lot quicker and easier to do as well. It's a pretty awesome feature and I am really enjoying using it. So let's check out some of the kernel features itself and right now the kernel doesn't have its own control app. We can use Trickster Mod. There is a control app in the works so we'll have to wait for the developer but right now like I said we can use Trickster. The kernel does come with overclocking options. You can overclock up to 1.8 GHz. If you're not much of an overclocker it doesn't really matter. It does come booted at 1.5 like normal. You do have vibrator strength options here. I normally turn it up to 100 because it's pretty awesome. Temperature throttle switches, GPU governor control right here. It doesn't come with a GPU overclock, but that's not much of a big deal. You've got LED control. Let's say, for example, the blue LED. You want a blue LED to turn on when you're charging or full. You can have that so you know when you're charging or your battery's full. It's pretty awesome. You've got MP decision control, and this is kind of complicated, but it basically decides when you want your course to be online and offline. It looks really complicated, and I will include a link in the description that tells you how to use this. The, it was written by the developer himself, so it makes it quite clear and it's definitely right. You've also got sound control here. It allows you to control your internal speaker, the dynamic range and the fixed gain. I tested this all the way up to 30 and when you put it on 30, it is pretty loud, so be careful with it. Next up, we've got thermal control. Pretty much does what it says on the tin. It allows you to change when your device throttles. You can see right now, mine throttles at 79 degrees down to 1.3 gigahertz. You can change that, of course, but be careful when messing around with thermal options because it is quite dangerous. You've also got the shutdown temperature as well. Under that, you've got the sweep to wake controls, and this allows you to turn it off or just set one option and not the other. So you can turn it off if you don't want that option at all. And right at the bottom here, you've got voltage control. Control. You can actually globally change the uh, the undervolt or the overvolt, or you can click the certain frequency and just change that one. So there's quite a lot of options on this kernel, and it's pretty damn awesome. Now moving on to battery life, I know a lot of people always ask me about battery life when it comes to kernels. It depends on your usage, you know, if you keep it at 1.5 gigahertz or under clocks, you're probably going to get somewhere in the region of 4 to 5 hours with 15 hours of standby. If you overclock it, you will get less. If you play games, you will get less as well. Next up, we'll talk about benchmarks. I know a lot of you guys want to see the benchmarks, so we'll open up Antutu here. And don't forget, take these with a pinch of salt because they do kind of vary all the time. I scored 20,631. You can see the detailed scores here. I was at 1.5 gigahertz, so I didn't try overclocking. Obviously, if you overclock, you will get a higher score. Geekbench, we've also got 2,323. That is a pretty good score. If we go to compare, you can see it scores basically 300 points more than the stock Nexus 4 gets. And pretty damn high so yeah the, the performance of the kernel is pretty damn good definitely give it a shot if you're on android 4.3 yeah peace out